Hey guys, today we're going to talk about an observation hive. So in one of our last videos, we got a bunch of questions about the observation hive. I've seen them. They're for sales from somewhere. Do you guys sell them? Uh, where did you buy it? All those things. I built it. Uh, I followed some instructions that I found on Google. It was pretty easy. We modified it a bunch in order to fit our needs and what we were going to do and to make sure the bees we're good to go. So I'm going to show it to you. Uh, observation hives are useful when you're showing to a non beekeeping group okay when you build yours test it out a day or two in advance or even the night before make sure your bees aren't getting out that's step one you do not want to put them in day of take them there and then oh now we have a bee with us oh two bees and before you know it by the end of the day all your bees are gone they're sitting in somebody's auditorium up in the top corner in the rafters and you can't get to them. You gotta go get a ladder. Not that that happened. Okay, but I'm gonna show you the pieces. So the first piece is the top. We have these little left, we zip tie those. That way nobody can take them off and having locks on them are, is a really good idea, but we, uh, I don't wanna carry a whole ring of keys for all the different locks on this thing. So that's, that's the first thing. You wanna make sure they have vent holes. That's what these are. On the other side, you want to have your uh, little routed, routed groove that um, your glass or your plexiglass will fit into. So that's what those are. That's pretty easy. Um, no bees won't escape out the, the hardware cloth. You're good to go. And they're not going to sting through it. We had some little kids trying to touch the bees and, and I was like, hey, uh, please stop. Um, and they're like, the bees are licking me. They feel the little feet. It was adorable, but not really okay. What we do encourage people to do is if they're tall enough, they can lean over and smell through these holes and you smell the hive. And that gives them an interaction that they've never had before of smelling a beehive. Okay, next we have the plexiglass. So that, I routed, I routed really well, actually with the table saw, but, um, they're, they're in there snug, so I'm not going to pull them out. But basically, you, you route the sides right here, and then you just slide it in on each side, and you'll need a rabbit for your frame to sit on. Okay. Hopefully, we can see that a little bit better. Try and hold it still. So this is where your frame would sit. You can also see that there's a queen excluder. There's a queen excluder here, and there's also more ventilation. So ventilation here, queen excluder on the inside, and then more ventilation. Why clean queen excluder? It's merely so I can show the public my queen. I'm just showing her off. Proud of her. She's laying a lot. Might as well show her off. I'll put a dot on her per the year that, that she was she emerged. The hooks on the side are just to hook this on. I, if somebody pushes the hive over, I want it to stay together. All right, so what's in the nuke box? Nuke box is pretty simple. Um, we got our bottom that's elevated. We have the box itself. We have our hooks to latch on the top where people actually see the bees. They don't get to open this. They don't see inside of this. First thing we have is a feeder. In the inner feeder, there are bumps and ridges so the bees can climb up and down. I will typically add extra mesh to hang in here, or I add in the middle. I typically do this. I'll take a piece of wood, measure your inner feeder, and then cut a piece of wood exactly to the size. Maybe a little bit smaller is okay. 
but then drill some very tiny holes in it. And what that's going to do is it's going to float on your feed. Then the bees can get on it. They can eat through the holes. Okay. And then as the level goes down, the wood will also sink. And as the wood's sinking down, it's still floating on top of the sugar syrup, but it's, it's going down with the level. Less bees die. Almost no bees die, really. But that's better. I will also hang a mesh on the side as well so that they can climb up and down as they're going in and out. Cause sometimes when they just like, when the level gets low enough, they'll just fall and hit the, the wood. And then as they're climbing out, they get sticky um, on the side. And then the next time they go in they it's not a good situation. Um, but I'll put that in, typically leave it in there so that this thing doesn't uh, start changing shapes on me. But there's that inner feeder and then you're gonna have four frames of bees. Now, you do that because your fifth frame is what goes in the top, your fifth frame with the queen. So you're not splitting up a 10 frame hive box, you're taking a nuke box that already had five frames, you're putting them in here, four in the bottom, one in the top, showing off your queen, doing your thing, and then you bring it back to your, your place the bees never left this hive, so they didn't reorient. They're not used to this hive. You, at the end of the day, or two days, you take these frames out, you put it into your original nuke box that's still sitting wherever you got it from, and then your bees just go out, they use the bathroom, they come back in, and they start doing business as normal. So it, it's not as disruptive as breaking up another hive and using half in here and half you're storing someplace else. What we're trying to do is keep the colony together. The only thing you're really disrupting is the fact that you're transporting, which kind of sucks, and then they're not able to forage for that day or that part of the day. Let's see, next we'll talk about the bottom. So why did we raise up the bottom? Why did we raise up the bottom? Because I drilled holes in the bottom for ventilation and then you cover them with hardware cloth and the bees will get warm, okay? While you're showing them off to hundreds of people, it'll get warm in the area you're already in. So this box is warm, the area you're in is warm, you don't wanna cook your bees and then by the end of the presentation or show and tell, all your bees are dead. We're not trying to kill a whole nuke. So I put holes in here, I put holes in the top. There's a lot of ventilation from the bottom to the top. That way the bees are happy and then the people that are, are viewing your bees can also smell what they have going on. If, if you're doing this in spring, which we've done it a couple times in spring, the smell is fantastic. When you do it in fall, and we've done it once in fall, sometimes the smell is great, sometimes it smells like dirty gym uh, socks. So just keep that in mind. And that's your observation hive. Pretty simple. It's a simple build. If you understand from just me showing you that, cool. If you need any instruction on how to do it, there is an excellent uh, Google SketchUp that's out there that's free. And in the near future, I'll be writing a blog on how to actually build this and how easy it is. But just remember, you have to have some legs on it, to prop it up, get your uh, holes for ventilation and then building the top is basically you're just taking a couple pieces of wood slapping them together and then you do a, a design and add your uh, plexiglass all right guys thanks for watching and i hope you enjoyed this video on what is a observation hive if you build one like this let me know if you have something that's an observation hive that's super simple to make like some people just make the top where you just put one frame in uh, tell me how you do it. I'd love to see pictures. Anything you want to post and direct me to it, I'll subscribe. Do the same for us. Please hit like, subscribe, follow, bells, whistles, anything that you can do to put us out there. We also have a store. All the proceeds from the store, so if you buy a shirt, pillow, tote, whatever, all that money goes right back to the bees. We're going to be buying uh, Varroa treatments with that. We're going to be getting bee feed with that. Um, 
materials to make bee boxes and I'll be posting videos on how I do that. If I get around to posting a video on how to make an observation hive, you guys will be the first to know. And that's a wrap. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about the smoker. Now, the smoker was invented by T.F. Bingham, and what he used at the beginning was actually a fire pot with a funnel on top of it. Well, let's get bottom some oxygen, and the more smoke you're going to get. If you're doing this practical, you want to be almost obnoxious with it, okay? Try and make sure you prove the point that yes, I can create smoke as we're doing here. It's burning my eyes. So maybe there's something to it because it does look like they're moving into our swarm trap. We're gonna keep an eye on them. And the queen just walked in. And the queen just walked in. Excellent. Let's, let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. So we, we, I caught her flying around it. And by caught her, I mean I saw her. And then I tried to catch her with my hands and I kept